stop. Okay, everybody. Hello there. Hopefully you can hear me. It's a real joy to be with you. Happy New Year to those of you um, that are joining us for the first time. And we're using a brand new system. So let's see how it goes. Uh, Henry's been great about getting this set up. Hopefully um, you'll be able to type in the type box because I will have some questions. I want this to be interactive. Um, so let's see how it goes. And if anything goes wrong, then we'll just sort it out as we go. So, I wanted to start by saying thank you. Um, hopefully, lots of you heard about our Teachers at the Heart competition. You can see the banner behind me. The competition um, ran all of last year. Thank you to everybody who entered. It's a little bit of a kind of thank you, but oh my golly, because we've got so many entries that came in. And we're in the process of checking through all the um, submissions then there'll be a short list and the winner will be announced on the 14th of February. So it's really great of the way that people took that up. So thank you very, very much. Um, by the way, if you're writing a comment, Henry's checking the comments as they come in and we will record the text chat. So any specific questions, if you do ask them, I will try and get back to you. So that was a brilliant competition. I'll be mentioning a few competitions coming up this year as I go through. I also wanted to say thank you for the life skills. I hope you all know that we actually won an Elton this year for it, which was a, um, in 2015 for it, which was brilliant. Um, but as you can see, uh, the downloads have gone really well. And we've got some new downloads for this year with our focus on life skills for employability. But I'll show a little bit more about that later. So that's another thank you. And then also for all the content that you've downloaded. I hope you tried out the teachers party for our Alice back in um, the spring, end of the spring last year. Our idioms and all the different infographs have gone great. Um, and if you want to know how to get all this free content, I will be mentioning that in this presentation. But it's been brilliant that you've, you've managed to be so um, engaged with what we've done. And of course, one of the best things is we've been able to meet so many of you at all the different events, IETFLs and TESOLs and teacher training events. Um, I've got to say a huge thank you to the people I met myself in Rome um, in, when we were down at um, IETFL in Manchester. It's been really, really brilliant meeting you all, um, and we look forward to meeting you, as many of you as we can at the events that are coming up this year. Um, if you keep checking our website and get our emails, you'll see all the events we're attending, and I'll be giving that address in a moment. So with all that out of the way, what's new for 2016? Well, we've got a little bit of something for everybody. We have some a new pre-primary course, we have some new editions of fantastic secondary courses. We've got some new components coming, and I'll speak about those in depth. We've got some free downloads and competitions and even more. So let's get going. First question, and you can type your answers. We've got a new pre-primary course, and the lovable character in it is Dex. What kind of an animal is Dex? And I've got my specs on, so Henry's had to check all the, <laughs> all the text because I can't read it, it's too small. Are they all getting the answer right? S someone said it's a hippo. <gasps> oh, sorry, no, not a hippo. Let's see. It's a, it's a dragon. Mm, close. A few it's dragons an, here. It's an extinct animal that begins with D. I think we've got our first right answer. Yeah. Juliana said dinosaur. It is. Dex is a dinosaur. And he's actually the lead character in a course called Discover with Dex. There are three levels to the course. There's a starter for very young learners, and then there are two more levels. Uh, we call it a mid-level because it's there for around five hours of English. I'm not going to go through the whole of this course, and you'll see why in a moment. But it's just such an absolutely adorable pre-primary course. I was a primary teacher and pre-primary teacher anyway. And I would be so excited if I saw this book. And I'm going to show you a couple of the features that make it really attention-grabbing. So here's the things it does. It gives early life skills development. Anybody who's been in a primary classroom knows that the life skills that we teach there really are skills for life. It's helping students to become more socially aware, to have better interactive skills with other students, to help to, to 
use their own workspace creatively. It's really the first time that lots of children have met a large group of their siblings of people of the similar age. And so at school, we always have a really big job, be it a nursery, a kindergarten, or a normal state school, in helping students become acclimatised to that. Dex does a fantastic job of helping to get students on that road. There's also a digital e-kit. There's lots of English culture. There's a fantastic magic phonics. There's a homeschool link. And, and this is brilliant, if you've got a mixed ability class, sometimes as a teacher, you have to make a lot of extra work for those students. This has a plus level, so it's got additional activities still within the unit theme and on the same grammar point, but with extra activities for those students that finish quickly. So I love Dex, and I just wanted to show you one or two of the activities that are in there that reinforce this. And this is a con this is something I'd like you to try and do on screen. So when they introduce the vocabulary. They don't just, in this book, give a list of the items and an image containing the items. This is a spot, the difference. Now, I appreciate if you're like me and you haven't got your specs on, spotting the difference isn't quite that easy. But this is aimed at the young ones, so it is pretty obvious. Can you have a look between the two pictures and let me know how many differences can you see? And as you can see from the numbers at the bottom, it goes from one to six. So how many differences can you see between the two pictures? If you'd like to type the number in and have a guess. Okay, getting some answers. Liana says six, Alipov says four, Natalia five, Ed four, Elena seven. Um, Irina 5, uh, Irina 6, Tatiana 5, Marina 5, Daniela 5, lots of 5s, mainly 5s and a few 6s. Right. Well, according to the book, it's 6 and I'll explain why. The first one is, um, and it's circled, is Daddy has got, um, a grandpa has got an, a, a strange expression on his face in one picture and he's smiling in the other. The next one is grandma. She's got a bonnet on her head or a hat on her head in one picture. And she doesn't have one in the next. Then if you look at the little boy who's kneeling, in one picture he's got a little car and in the other it's a teddy bear. If you look just behind him, the little girl, she's got a flower on her t-shirt in one picture. She doesn't have a flower in the other. Sitting next to the girl in one picture is Daddy. But in the other picture, it's Mummy. And then, because they've changed, the person behind is Mummy and Daddy. They're swapped. So technically, there are actually six differences in that picture. But for young learners, what a great way to introduce the family vocabulary and reintroduce some of the vocabulary from the previous unit. So it's, it's given a chance for students to see lots of differences, to actually learn the new words, so we're learning family members. But for those students that can learn it quickly, there's a slightly more absorbing way to do it. And I think that's a really nice change from the old days when we just have a list of the pictures and a picture with those items in it. It makes it more engaging for young learners. And if Henry would like to have a quick look at the comments, he can hopefully say that people agree. <laughs> I think, yeah. Good. Yep, yep, yep. Getting that. Good. There are another screen, and this is the only other screen I'm going to show from this that I wanted to show was. Here we've got um, the sounds lesson. So we're looking at sounds, and obviously we're going to have go for grandma and things like that. But it's not just a sounds page. It's not just a practice letter of the alphabet page. As you can see along the bottom, there are five different activities based on that one page. What I really like about this, if, if I was teaching pre-primary again, it gives me so many more things to focus on with my students. It's not just one great big, say, picture of grandma and they have to colour it and do a letter and trace the letter G. It's got a lot of interactivity and it reinforces the numbers again, which is really nice. So this is Discover with Dex. And The thing about it is, it offers, 
the pictures aren't showing, that's disappointing. It, it offers an awful lot of dynamic um, learning. There is actually a, an online phonics tool. Unfortunately, my picture hasn't pinged up, and Henry can see there is a picture. Yep. There you go. So it's a dynamic phonics tool. Um, and that's usable by teachers at the front of the class. It's got audio so they can hear the sounds being pronounced. It's got wonderful little, little animations and it's beautifully presented. There's also a fantastic homeschooling, um, which again, well, the wooden pictures has come up. But <clears throat> you can find out a lot more about this from somebody who truly knows the course inside out because the author is speaking later today. So if you're available at three o'clock today, Sandy will actually be taking you through DEX. And I would highly recommend, if you can join, that you do. Of course, you will be able to watch, we'll record the session so you can watch it later. But I know she'd very much appreciate your live participation. Um, and her enthusiasm for this course is infectious. As you can see, she's a teacher, she's taught in the classroom, so she knows what it's like. So, a quick recap on our pre -primary, new pre-primary course. It's digitally savvy, it's engaging and helps students really get to grips with the English culture and with English language, and there's heaps of extra components, including the plus level, to make mixability classes so much more entertaining. So that's our pre-primary new course. I suppose some of you might be saying, so what about primary? What do we have for them? Well, I'm going to show, I hope, a couple of very famous faces of covers. I hope most of you have heard of Brainwave, which is our fantastic American English, uh, higher level English course, and also Macmillan English. What we've got new for them is really exciting. It's a component called a digital student's book. And what that does is it takes the print book but it doesn't just turn it into a flat PDF. A digital student's book has actually got the video and the audio and extra activities linked. And you'll find that digital student's book will be a feature of this presentation because we've added it to quite a few. It's a lot of work. Um, I was surprised at the actual neat work that goes into creating one of these items so that students can really zoom around the page and answer questions as they want and revisit items. It's very well designed. I can see a lot of text chat coming in. I'm just going to ask Henry to give it a quick quick check and make sure there's nothing immediate I need to answer. Not right now. Um, can everyone still hear okay? Just let me know. Otherwise, yeah, lots of nice comments about the course. Good. Right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look. Now this is a bit of a techno first. So if this works, fantastic. If it doesn't work, um, then I'll try and get back to you. We're going to try and show you some of the digital students book for Macmillan English now online. So I'm going to hand over to Henry for a second and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing on screen. I'll just talk through what Henry's done. It's all right. Um, because with Macmillan English or with any of our courses uh, that have a digital student's book, you'll be given a place to go and redeem a code for the Young Learners materials. That will be on the Young Learners portal, which was where Henry just went. Once you've logged in once, it remembers you. So you can go back to your digital student's books and find them, which is what Henry did. And for Macmillan English, uh, the digital student's book 
sounds like one book, but actually it contains three bits, as you can see on there. It contains the language book, the practice book, and the fluency book. We're going to look at the language book now, which is what Henry's got up. So, this one. Yep. On the left. So, say your students, um, say you're working with your students on unit six, then. Thank you. So I love the specs. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> is pointing at stuff for me. Tell you when you get old, isn't it? Um, so let's have a look at Unit 6 and the pages, and it will simply load. The good thing is I can now see this. <laughs> so here's the student book as you would normally see it, um, but of course it's in a digital form. Now why is that so good? Um, well, first of all, for young learners, I don't know about the students you know, but outside of the classroom, they're on, the, on mobile phones or on tablets all the time. Um, a friend of mine has two young children, one who's just two, the other one who's just gone four. And both of those children are perfectly capable of using her um, tablet or mobile phone to find little games and songs to scan through the pages. So children are very technically savvy, even at a young age. This course, Macmillan English, goes for, through the six years of primary, as does Brainwave. So as students get older, they're just going to become more and more and more wanting to use technology. So here's the page that students see. I don't know if you can see where my cursor is going, but I'm now circling the icons at the top. And they're pretty obvious what they are, which is great if you're somebody like me and haven't got your specs on. Um, first of all, there's a pencil. So that means that you can go and you can circle things. So for example, if students have to, if you get them into pairs or in small groups, and I know if you only have one or two computers or tablets in your class, you will do this as group activities. You can ask, you can give them a word, and children can take it in turns to circle something. The next icon is a highlighter. So if you want them to highlight a certain word, so for example, here we've got fantastic, you can get them to highlight that word. The next thing that you can do is get them to actually type something. If you wanted them to say you were doing a spelling test, I know it's old fashioned, but lots of us still do it, especially if you're reviewing vocabulary. If I was reviewing colour vocabulary, I might use this page and I might ask the students to type, what is the colour of the t-shirt with the number one on it? And I'd expect them to be typing blue. Um, the other features that are on here, there is, sorry, There is um, an added personal note page where students can add what they want. There are additional resources. And then the one that I like best, of course, is there's an ability to zoom in. So you can really zoom in on different things. You can flip through pages. At the moment, this is just a sample page, so I'm not going to flip through too many. But you can see it's very, very simple to use. Even for very young students, they should be able to do this. When you've finished, you can simply go back to the other resources. So let's have a look at the audio. And I hope you can hear this. this is, again, this is the first we've tried it. So give it a go. I will see. And I'll go back to the normal page after. Ina, Tilly and Moby are on the beach. Ben is in the Nina has got a lovely shell. Moby is under a big umbrella. This beach fantastic! Yes! It's great! Have you got a shell, Nina? Yes, I have. I can hear the sea. Right, we're going to try and get back and see if there's any comments and if you're still there. <laughs> okay. 
and lots of nice comments. Good. Cool, really great, great. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> it is. I'm really pleased that work. As you can appreciate, in a short presentation like this, trying to show all the different digital things is quite hard. But I hope you saw, A, how exciting that was for, for, for us as adults, just to be able to play around. Imagine that in the hands of the six, seven, eight, nine year olds. Um, so the Digital Students book is something which really adds an awful lot to what we can do. So my next question is, have you been paying attention? What does a DSB stand for? And you've got a choice of A, delightful student books, B, digital students book, or C, digital spelling book. It answers in the chat box now. Um, quite a few Bs, one or two Cs as well, but no As yet. <laughs> Right. Actually, yeah, it's it's B. It stands for Digital Students Book. So I've shown you two courses that already have will have a Digital Students Book: Brainwave and Macmillan English. So I guess the question you may want to ask me is, what is the benefit of doing this? Digital Students Books have lots of fantastic implications. Now I know not everybody has the luxury of having tablets or computers for every child in class. I've been there myself. I know that's that's the case. But with courses like this, one of the great things about having a digital student's book is when the student gets home, because they can redeem the code from their book, they can go online at home and they can practice again and again and again. And there is what we're calling a grade book, but it's not really a score as such. They can try activities again and again so they can improve their scores. Um, I don't know how many of you have become completely addicted to Candy Crush. I will hold my hand up. I have. It's a pointless game with absolutely no real outcome, but you constantly want to get better. And I think that engagement is something which is really important. So, and I think students very often even at a young age, want to do better. We all like to do better. And that's the great thing about Digital Students Book. At home, a child can go online and simply practice. This is the point of it being a student book. It's great for staying engaged because we know children are very digitally savvy, so why not give them work in a medium they enjoy? If they have added notes in class, and this again, personally, I would be using for those little spot quizzes we do, the little spelling tests or the little complete the sentence activities, if they've written out from either what you've shown them or an activity card or something you've done in class, if they have a full sentence they have to then change the key words in, they can review their notes. So it helps them become more independent learners. And of course, for young learners in particular, I know asking a teenager, what did you do in school today? You're going to get a grunt if you're lucky or completely ignored if you're not. But younger students are still keen to show mom, dad, possibly grandma, grandpa what they've been doing. And having something digital that they can control is very exciting. So for young learners, it builds a really good homeschool link. So I've mentioned two books already. Keep listening because one of my last questions is how many books will I show you with, how many courses will I show you with a digital student's book. So those are the courses we've created, but I didn't just want to make this, here's some books by it. We've got some fantastic resources and at the start I said thank you for being in our competitions. I'm now going to mention where you can get lots of our free resources from. For your teachers of young learners, this year we'll be running a World of Young Learners campaign. Now this map, um, we, we have sent lots out to the market, so maybe if you go to an event you may be able to pick one up. But it's also going to be available online. We'll have the world map this month, we'll have a map with animals around the world next month, and then every alternate month we will have throughout this year a, a map showing the planets, a map showing geographical places, one showing sports from around the world, one showing languages around the world, and one showing uh, the 2017 calendar and key festivals. 
Every one of these comes with activities that you can use in class. And if you want to know how to get them, you can see at the top I've given the web address. This is for all of our newsletters. If you teach primary or pre-primary, obviously tick to receive that one. And you can actually tick to receive the different emails as you like. Um, but this is a great resource. And this PowerPoint will be um, available after. So if you can't write it down now, you can go back and find it. But if you're not signed up for our newsletters, A, you're missing out on all the news. B, you're missing out on some great free resources. And C, you're missing out on a chance to, to find out the latest news as it happens. So that's what we're doing for primary. So we'll now get on to secondary. Does anybody know who this author is? And I'm hoping there's going to be a real flurry of people typing right now. David Spencer, this is Natalia. It is Natalia. You're the winner. It's Dave Spencer. Dave Spencer is a fantastic author. He does so much work um, to, to help do online training, teacher training. He goes around and visits classes and all that kind of thing. But he creates some fantastic courses. And we're very, very excited to announce that Gateway 2nd Edition is available. It's also got a fantastic revamped site. So anybody who's been using Gateway 1st Edition should hopefully see the beautiful new site. And it's got a digital students book. That's the third course I've mentioned with a digital students book. What does it do? It prepares teams in so many ways. It's got fantastic exam prep. It's got life skills at the heart of every unit, and they are really well structured. So it gives students lots and lots and lots of skills they're going to need as they, get, as they leave school. It shows grammar in context. Really exciting. You get a free Macmillan Reader ebook with every level. And it's not a mistake. There's what we're calling the flipped classroom. What this is, is a series of videos which Dave has hosted explaining the grammar points. The idea is that students can review this material before they get to class. They can watch it as many times as they like, because it's video. Being Dave, it's got the most fantastic explanations. It makes it very, very, very clear what the grammar point is and how the grammar point's applied. For us as teachers, it means we don't have to spend as much time in class presenting the material. And for students, it means if they didn't get it the first time, they can watch and re-watch Dave's explanation. It's really, really well done. Now, I could show you that, but actually there's a much better option coming up than me telling you about Gateway. Because you can join Dave for his webinar on the 24th of February about the flipped classroom. As well as the webinar, and I do hope you sign up for it because he's a fantastic speaker. There's also going to be a series of videos which we'll be putting out online. And there's also going to be eight special preparing for exam videos which Dave has done as well. So that's a fantastic bulk of information from Dave. Um, I know that after this webinar, you'll actually be able to sign up for those if you want and see all the details. Oh, I really recommend it. It'll be a fantastic treat. So there's Dave speaking about his course. As well as that, if you have signed up for our secondary emails, and I showed you that address earlier, you'll be able to get lots of gateway activities from Manhaspa, and here's an example of one. There's also going to be different promotions for Gateway, different activities. Um, so if you're not on our emailing list, I would recommend you do it. The resources are free and they're fantastically well written. So that's what we have for secondary that's brand new. We've also, of course, got stuff for adults. One of the things when I taught adults, um, I actually taught in Japan where people often sign up for courses and can't attend all the time. I don't know if that's a problem that any of you that teach adults have with students that can attend for so many weeks, then they're away on business, or they have a deadline and they can't make class, and you're constantly rushing around trying to help them get the most from the classes they've signed up to, but they can't always be there in person. Well, we've got two solutions for that. Sometimes they need to be able to catch up, sometimes a whole book is too much, and sometimes there's different demands. So, we have a thing called Breakthrough... Ooh. Breakthrough Plus. What do you think the new component is? Now, if you don't get this one right, I think you've fallen asleep. <laughs> 
Henry, if you'll put the answer down. DSB, 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 DSB. You are a fantastic audience. Yes, it's a digital student's book. For some reason, the picture's been ever so slow at loading, so I do apologise for that. Yeah, it's a digital student's book. And here's a picture of the screen um, from that. As you can see, um, it looks actually very similar in the actual tools that there are to what we have for the primary class. But of course, it's a much more sophisticated layout with a lot more activities. And as you can see from the icons, there's a lot more audio and video here because, of course, it's for an adult audience. But it works in exactly the same way. It's just as easy to use. The audio and the video are just clicked out online. It makes it a very exciting thing. And as I've said before, the great thing about digital students' books, especially for adults, is they can preview the material before they come to class. So you may get more questions, but you also get more practice time for speaking. But it also means if they're away for any reason, on a business trip or stuck in the office, they can go online and cover the same material. So it's, it's really great for, for online for that solution. But another thing that we've had people come back to us and say is, actually, 10 units is maybe too much. I only get my students possibly once a week. I maybe only get them for 90 minutes. You may have a revolving enrollment if you teach at a private language school. So sometimes you find a book too much. Well, one of our really um, strong titles is straightforward. And what we've done for that is we've now made split editions available. And they put together part of the student book and the workbook together. So that means that instead we now have, in this split edition version, eight levels going from A2 to C1. Um, I don't think that's something that excites you, but for me as a teacher when I taught at private language school, that would be a really great way, especially for the shorter courses. Not everybody can sign up for a year, and it, gives, it gave us, would have given us the option to run shorter courses specifically targeted at the right level. Henry, can you have a quick look at the feed button? Yeah. Just tell me anything anybody says. Um, someone asking <laughs> what level that's aimed for, um, which you may have covered. But... The, the, right. Both of these courses are adult courses, so um, the level I'm showing now for this split edition, it runs from A2 to C1. Hopefully that answers it. Like I said, we're keeping the text chat and we'll quickly go back through. And if there are any major questions that I've missed, we will try and get back to you in the next couple of days. So I hope that answered the question. If it didn't, type the full question and we'll come back and answer it. So two, two great additions to our adult stream. One with the digital student's book. That was Breakthrough Plus. But we've got another top selling um, adult course which is MIND. I hope many of you have heard of MIND. It's been around for a couple of years. We've now had got a UK version. Well, we have got something really exciting and new to tell you about and I hope this really grabs your attention. We're running, we're going to have skills for work employability videos. Why are they so great? Lots and lots and lots of us face students who are learning English for employability but then they go to an interview and they fail. Or they're not ready to go into work. And this can be both people who are new and leaving school and people who've had one job for a long time and then face a change in career because of redundancy. So we put together these fantastic videos. The way that they're structured is, first of all, you watch a scenario that's not done too well, but still acceptable. It's still very common. We then have a coach that comes in and explains how it could be improved. And then the video continues with how it could have been done better. We've already had feedback from one chap who watched an interview, our interview um, video, took on board the points, and then got a job with Barclays Bank. So it, these really are well structured. You can see the topics that are covered. There's also worksheets, and they are all available online for free. If you're using the Open Mind, they are the most fantastic supplement. But I would say go in and take a look, because they are brilliant. And with the worksheets, it gives you a real chance to get your students ready for work. So Henry, I can see a lot of comments coming in. Do you want to have a quick look? Yeah, some nice feedback. Um, Irene is asking if Open Mind is a, a business course. No, it's, it's a general English course. 
it isn't specifically a business course, but obviously it focuses on all those things which would concern any adult English language learner. So that's it's got life skills in it. it. It covers the grammar, it covers vocabulary, it covers holidays, all the normal kinds of topics, but it also does things like giving presentations on work-based activities as well. But it's a general English course. It's superb. It goes from an elementary level right through. Um, it's written by a fantastic author team, um, including Steve Taylor Knowles and Mickey Rogers and Dorothy Zemak, all really famous names. If you haven't taken a look, absolutely get onto the site and take a look. But I'm going to give a web address in a moment. Is there any other comment of what we should pick up on, Henry? Um, is Gateway Second Edition a DSB? Asks Natalia. Yes, Gateway Second Edition definitely does have a digital student's book. Yes. Right, I'll carry yeah. on, Henry. Okay. Thanks for reading. No, no <laughs> <laughs> right, as well as that, we've got um, a competition running this year which offers three two week work placement uh, experiences here in the UK. Um, I'm going to run through a little bit of the competition uh, on screen now, um, but it's a chance for anybody learning English, especially students, to come and have a work experience here at the Macmillan offices. There are three first prizes, which is two weeks in London, and that includes your flights accommodation. We're hoping we'll have an awful lot of incredibly good um, submissions for this competition. So we're not just having three winning first prizes. We will also have three runners-up prizes, which will be one-to-one -one coaching with a life coach um, over the phone or um, online. Because we realize how essential getting people ready for employment is. So I hope that's something that you find exciting. There is um, a poster which is out there, and you can also find all the details on the mine site to go and, and join this competition. Um, if you haven't been to www.macmillanenglish.com, go and have a look because we'll have competition details there. But if you also, if you are actually using the MIND course, if you look at the MIND um, companion site, you'll find the details there too. We'll also be sending out mail outs with the competition details. But it would be fantastic to see a huge number of entries because a two-week work experience is always valuable. To have the luxury of being flown up to the UK, found accommodation, given your meals, and have the work experience as well is a really great prize. And three winners will be chosen. So this competition is going to run throughout 2016. Um, if your students enter, I wish them the very, very best of luck. Um, but if you have any questions, just pop them in the text box. So moving on, we've done pre-primary, primary, secondary adult. What about exams? Now, here's a really difficult question. How many parts are there to the Cambridge First reading and use of English paper? OK, answers in the chat box again. I don't we aren't going to get many answers to this, Henry, because it is a jolly <laughs> difficult question. A few people are typing. Ooh, good. Okay, Irina thinks four. This isn't the how many parts are there to the Cambridge first exam. It's the reading and use of English paper specifically. So, um, I think it's maybe six. Elena says perhaps two. Oksana, three. And then plenty of fours and a seven. Ooh, who's the seven? Uh, Natalia. Natalia. If that was a jolly good guess, or oh, you're spot on, it's seven. Now, why did I put in such a nasty question? Well, there's an easy answer. It's because I really want to let people know about our fantastic site that we have for exams. You'll find this, as you can see, at www.macmillanenglish.com slash exams. Um, and we've got a fantastic breakdown of every single exam, English language exam, and what the papers are the amount of time, the kind of questions. It's a really brilliant detailed guide. 
I'll be honest, I wouldn't have known how many parts there were to that specific paper. But it tells you in detail. And it's all there for free. There's also some fantastic videos done by a lady who was um, a Cambridge examiner uh, for many, many years. She plays a teacher's role, and we have a student called Fanta, um, who's also in the video. And the videos show different ways for teachers to prepare students for exams. And it offers hints for students preparing for exams so they know what to do better. And of course, there are case studies and up-to-date information if you have students who, whose exams are really crucial for, for getting them overseas. So if you haven't been to that site yet, again, it's all free. Go have a look. But the downloadable information on the exams is really fantastic, and so are the videos. And we constantly update it with new news. So that's another free thing. I mentioned some products, but I wanted to mention some things on the website so you can find out more about exams. And then my final plug for a different thing is for readers. The last question I've got, what happened 400 years ago? And I hope that's a really big hint from the little illustration. <laughs> Let's see who knows. <laughs> Two people typing away. I, was say, I think there's going to be a lot of right answers to I this, Henry. So. <laughs> Still typing. My golly. <laughs> right, Elena. Shakespeare, yeah, you're the first one. Well done, Elena. Yes, you're right. Are they all coming in with Shakespeare? Mm -hmm. I think it was a bit of a hit. After a hard question, an easy one's always appreciated. Yes, you're right. 400 years ago, Shakespeare snuffed it, as we say. He died, which is quite interesting because it was 1616, which I a date you can remember. <laughs> so we can't let something like this go by without celebrating it in a sort of weird way. Do you celebrate the death of somebody? I suppose you can. Recognising it, maybe. <laughs> so, what are we going to do? Well, we have got so many exciting things planned for Shakespeare 400. We're going to have a ghostwriter present blogging as if Shakespeare were alive now. We're going to have lessons and quizzes and infographics and all sorts of things. And you may be wondering, Henry, are you wondering how do I get all these great resources? I am wondering that, Carol, yes. Exactly. <laughs> Did we give a web address out during this session? I believe we did. We did. And you can sign up for emails and things, or you can just take a look at the site. Remember, www.macmillanenglish.com is the place to find out more. So we've got all these great things happening for Shakespeare. But not just that. I hope one or two of you have been on YouTube, because we have our own YouTube site, and we've got some smashing videos. Just type, go to YouTube and type Macmillan ELT and you'll actually find us. It's so easy peasy. But we've got these charades. Um, if you've got a group of students, or even if you're bored waiting for the bus, just go and have a look at them. They're brilliant. This chap, um, as you can see in the top screen, is acting out different Shakespeare charades. And we're going to have a whole new series to add to it. As well as that, we're going to have um, some interviews with Shakespeare phrases being used on the street. And we're going to have some beside, behind the scenes material as well. So lots and lots and lots of great things. Of course, if you go to our YouTube site, you'll find all sorts of other goodies too. But that's for you to go and have a look at. And we'll have a Shakespeare special with Chris Rose. If you missed his readers webinar last year, oh golly, go back and have a look at it. It was fantastic. He's going to do a Shakespeare special for us on Wednesday, the 20th of April. Um, and Basically, I'm going to sign up after this. It's going to be so good. So join Chris Rose for that webinar. As well as that, we have another competition. Um, and once again, my little image hasn't come up. Um, we're going to have a Shakespeare writing competition. The past writing competition that we had this year for Alice had so many results, it was unbelievable. So hopefully we'll do even better. We have literally thousands of competition entries. So we'd love to see a great entry to the Shakespeare competition. As you can see, it'll be announced in March, and we'll have more details then, and hopefully the picture will work. As well as that,
As well as that, we've got our ongoing campaigns. You saw the teachers at the heart when I came online. We're still keeping that campaign going, though unfortunately you can't win the, um, the Nile Prize, but we'll still be doing things for Teachers at the Heart. And for Life Skills for 2016, we've got a fantastic toolkit which you can download. It goes, it helps prepare both yourself or your students for work. It's got great ideas in it, and it should be going up online today. So if you go to our website, you'll be able to see it. There'll also be print versions, which you may see at some of our events. I've been mentioning a lot about going online. The place to find out about things is on our website, macmillanenglish.com, where you can find information about all the webinars and all our products and all of our freebies. You can also see our online catalogue, or hopefully you'll go to an event and be able to pick up the catalogue. So, very quickly, can anybody tell me how many books did I mention that had a DSB in this presentation? My final question. Right, a um, few answers coming in. Three, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> three, 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 three. I can't keep up. Mainly three. Mainly three. What saying? Well, actually, you're one out. It was four. There was Macmillan English, there's Brainwave, there's Gateway Second Edition, and Breakthrough Plus. Um, I, want to, I know we're running ever so slightly over time because we were only scheduled to be on until um, 9.45, so I do apologise for the five minutes I've, I've gone on extra. But I want to say thank you very, very much for joining me. Thank you for trying to type the answers and the engagement level, which has been very high. Um, if you did type a question and I missed it, I am so sorry. I'm afraid basically there's blinds about without my specs. <laughs> so, and Henry's been trying to get them as well. I will be repeating this presentation later this afternoon and it will be available online. Just to let you know, we will be sending you a link after um, to the certificate for attending this session. Ah, well there's news because actually I can I can upload it now Ooh. so I'm going to be using a new system so you don't even have to worry about emailing us about it. So what I'll do when Carol's finished is I'll come on and send that to you via the program now so just don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, stay where you are. Yep. Um, it's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you. It was great as well putting the dots on the map. That was so wonderful. I think the photo of this person away was somebody who looked to be in either Singapore mm -hmm. or down there. But thank you so much. I've really appreciated it. And if you stay online now, Henry's going to sort out the certificate for you. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, thanks, Carol. Okay, so I'm in the hot seat now. Hopefully, you can all hear me. And um, if you bear with me a few short moments, I'll have the certificate uploaded for you and you'll be able to download it. So um, I'm just going to upload it now and it will appear in the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the file box in a few short moments. So here we go. Let me put my camera on as well so you can see me. And if you're watching the recording later on, you'll also be able to download this certificate. So, uh, does everybody see now um, the file box, which I'm going to expand so it's really obvious? Oh, my mouse doesn't want to play ball today. Okay, I'm going to drag it up to the top here. And there you'll see the certificate is sat in it and what you can do is um, just click on that press download and then you will be able to save it onto your computer and um, I'm just putting in a chat box so that you can ask me some questions about this you'll print it off okay 